Arkrunner is a third person cyberpunk themed roguelite shooter which released on other consoles last year and has just released on the Nintendo Switch. But will its gameplay loop hack into your Switch playtime or will the memory of it fade away like tears in the rain? Well thank you to the publishing team for the review code and now let's find out. So story wise then we are greeted with a civilization that is now AI led. Unfortunately one day the AI goes rogue necessitating the initiation of the Arc Runner program. You are one such Arc Runner and must take down the AI in order to save humanity. So gameplay wise then this is a roguelite shooter in that you go on runs and whilst when each run ends you will go back to the very beginning there is some meta progression there in terms of nanites that you can then use to permanently upgrade your character potentially making future runs that bit easier. We'll get to that in a moment though just look at the basic gameplay first and every time you start a run you will be loaded into the first area. There are three main themed areas in the game each with six levels to complete and these levels basically work as arenas that you'll be locked into at times and need to take down all of the enemies before being able to move further into the level again it will lock down and once all enemies are defeated within one level you can move on to the exit where you'll be given an upgrade that applies for that one run and taken to the next level to go again. In some of the levels there are also challenge rooms and attempting these will see the area locked down completing whatever the challenge may be it could be killing a certain amount of enemies using just melee attacks for example will then give you access to a chest and you'll have an option of three different items within there that you can then choose from. To take down these enemies you have a primary weapon and killing enemies will see them drop new weapons on the floor you can then choose one of these. Hovering over a weapon will show you its stats compared to the stats of your gun as it stands at the moment but you also have a melee attack which you can use by pressing R. Each character type also has a specific skill which is activated by pressing ZL. For example the ninja can enter stealth mode whereas the soldier has a shield they can put up to prevent them from taking damage for a limited amount of time. These are tied to your energy bar which is shown at the bottom of the screen just below your health bar. As well as these you can also pick up a, another sub weapon of sorts. It could be something like a drone that you can drop to help you out or a bomb that you can throw which will highlight an area of the floor with any enemies that then step into this being damaged or slowed down for example. These have a cooldown time attached to them and again you will find new ones on the floor that you can switch between should you wish. Some of the guns also have an elemental power to them, it could be poison or electricity and the skills that I mentioned that you are presented with at the end of each of the levels do sometimes attain to improving the elemental aspects of weapons if this is an avenue that you want to go down. Within each of the areas there are a couple of boss levels and these do help to mix things up as you go along. Each boss will have its own strategy that you'll need to overcome and taking them down is certainly satisfying. So I mentioned the nanites earlier and these come into effect once you lose your run and go back to the starting area. From here you will be presented with a huge number of stats that you can put these points, these nanite points into from basics such as increasing your health or damage that you deal to some that are a bit more specific. And you do start to notice how these improve you as you go on a second or third run. Within this hub area you can also choose to change your starting weapon and you do this once you use a weapon enough for it to be added to your inventory in this area. This is quite a nice idea actually to do it this way. It does encourage you to try new weapons out whilst at the same time it doesn't penalise you for having your favourite if you don't care about having others to choose from. The game is tough, it's certainly difficult when you are being shot at from all areas, there's no real cover to the game, it looks like there will be but there isn't. You can use things such as cars as cover but there's no cover mechanic if you know what I mean and you can also blow these cars up in order to destroy any enemies that are standing by them. You can also choose to play in multiplayer online by having a second player or a third player actually, it's up to three players, join you and this definitely elevates the experience for me and whilst the gameplay is fun I never felt it hit the heights of other such roguelites on the Switch, not because there's anything wrong with the core gameplay, this is absolutely fine, but I suppose you just don't have as many options as you do in other such games. It would be nice if you were able to pick up a couple more weapons than just one, maybe scrap the ones you don't want, something just a bit more to go with that core gameplay, as it can start to feel a bit repetitive even in between one run, let alone going on multiple runs over time. 
In terms of the controls, you are moving your character with the left stick and aiming with the right. You can change the sensitivity within the options menu, although unfortunately there is no gyro aiming included. Core gameplay is fun and is definitely an enjoyable game here. I will say that it does feel a little bit basic at times and repetition sets in a lot quicker than I would have expected. It gets 14 out of 20. Controls are okay, although it does feel as if it needs that gyro aiming in a game such as this. Controls get 15 out of 20. Now in terms of the visuals, this game obviously goes for a cyberpunk theme in terms of the general aesthetic. You'll see a lot of the classic tropes of that genre, all presented in a low poly art style. The use of the neon colours and the more downtrodden areas with that high tech feeling to them does work quite well, although I will say this Switch version is quite blurry even when playing on the big screen. This means a lot of the details are lost and whilst it still manages to get by just on that strong colour palette alone, it does mean that a lot of the areas start to look the same. Now obviously there is some procedural generation here so you will see a lot of the same assets, but it's that lack of definition that does mean that a lot of it just merges together anyway. As I mentioned, there are three different areas the first one being the city for example and there are six stages to each of these areas and you'll see a lot more variety in the stages as you move on to a new area I will say that six stages of one area before you move on is too many I feel maybe four different areas or four stages each would have been better just to have you experience a little more variety a bit sooner in terms of performance, there weren't any issues when playing either single player or online. I didn't encounter any frame drops or noticeable stutters as I played, which was good, certainly in a game like this. But that does take us on to audio, and this is another major issue for the game. Now, when you hear the initial audio loop, it sounds absolutely fine. More than fine, in fact, it fits the theme incredibly well and does get you in the mood. But then you realise that that loop is very short. I would estimate about 20, 30 seconds long max and you hear it over and over again and it goes past just being quite repetitive it starts to drill into your brain it's nothing wrong with the music per se if i played you a clip of it now for 10 seconds you'd think it sounded good but hearing it so often really does start to bring the gameplay down to the point i'll be honest by the end i was muting the game just so i could have a break from it Aside from this, the sound effects are fine, doing what they need to do, but there are some noticeable disappointments, just things like when you blow up a car to try and kill enemies, and you see the red area underneath as it gets ready to blow. The anticipation of seeing it happen is kind of let down by the fact it sort of pops and then it's gone. It really doesn't have that weight of impact that you would expect in such a game. Visuals are certainly pleasant and the cyberpunk theme does carry the game in some respects but when you look closer and you just see the lack of detail and some repetition it does harm the score and it gets 13 out of 20. Audio again if you just heard it initially you'd think it was very good you'd be ready to hear more of it but there isn't much more at all it's that endless loop that really does start to filter into your mind. With that in mind unfortunately it gets 10 out of 20. Arc Runner costs £16.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Now in terms of that price, obviously as I mentioned there are three different areas with six levels each. You could run through this game quite quickly, but owing to that roguelike nature of dying and having to start again, it will take most people, I would say, a fair while if you do want to see the end of the game. There is the fact that you do get stronger by using those nanites every time you do die and this will make subsequent runs that bit easier as well as just picking up the basic idea of how to play but it isn't a roguelike that i would say you'd play after completing it you know you have games such as dead cells or colt canyon is a new one i've discovered vampire survivors certainly games that you can complete in my opinion and still want to play i wouldn't necessarily say this game fits into that bracket there is the online multiplayer to use as well and this definitely adds some longevity but again I just feel there are better options out there for the price that you would pay for this game. That's not a knock against this game, there's nothing inherently wrong with it, I just feel there are other games that would catch my attention certainly for longer periods even after seeing the end credits. Value gets 13 out of 20. To conclude, Ark Runner is definitely a fun game, there is fun to be had here, and its core gameplay mechanics do work well. 
I would say that the flashy nature of the cyberpunk theme does mask what is ultimately a bit of a bland looking game with those bright neon colours almost distracting you to the fact that a lot of what's there isn't that interesting to look at or is a bit too blurry to even see properly and that musical loop is an absolute killer I'm afraid. All in all, I would say this is one to pick up on sale if you are looking for such a game and if you have someone to play with online, it certainly ramps up the fun factor. Arc Runner gets a switch up score of 65%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Don't forget if you are looking for eShop credit to pick this game up or any other for that matter, you can get your eShop card at our website switchup.gg, doing so will get you 5% of your purchase price back in cashback and then you can use this against a future purchase of course, and there's also some links down there to companies such as PlayAsia, Premium Edition Games and Red Art Games with some discount codes for you to use and some of these are affiliate links which does help the channel out, so if you do use them, thank you very much. Also, a big thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.